All praise and thanks be to Allah. We seek His help and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide him. I bear witness there is no, there is no true God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. O believers, be mindful of Allah in the way he deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to him. O humanity, be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it he created its mate and through both he spread countless men and women and be mindful of Allah in whose name you appeal to one another and honor family ties. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. O believers, be mindful of Allah and say what is right. He will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has truly achieved a great achievement. The truest board is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil matters are those that are newly invented in the religion. For every newly invented matter is an innovation and every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used different methods to guide the humanity. He subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets, he revealed the books, he sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us and revealed the Quran as a guidance for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. He also said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ We have not sent a messenger except in the language of his people to clarify the message for them. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used different ways to explain things. One of the methods and ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to explain things is to give examples. And by examples, we are able to visualize concepts and we are able to understand easily. And one of the examples of this method that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in the Quran is in Surah Al-Jum'ah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the people of book who were given the Torah and they were asked to believe the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was sent but they denied to believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even though they were asked to obey him in the book that, they were, that was revealed to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارًا The example of those who were entrusted with observing the Torah but failed to do so is that of a donkey carrying books. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving example of people who have access to knowledge but they are not benefiting from the knowledge they have access to. The example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used is of a donkey. When we see a donkey carrying books, we are able to compare and see the difference between someone understanding the knowledge than just carrying it. So when someone has the knowledge and practices the knowledge he has, it is very clear and different than the person who is just carrying the knowledge without practicing and understanding it. One other important concept in Islam is being a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِّنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا Give good news, give good, good news and glad tidings to the believers that they will have a great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is promising the believers Jannah, paradise. 
The most important thing, brothers and sisters here, is to understand and to know what it means to be a believer. We can only be good believers and enter the paradise if we only understand what it means to be a believer. Similarly, to define what a believer is like, the Prophet Wasallam gave examples. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave examples of what is meant to be a believer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave many examples and analogies that represent the attributes and characteristics of believers. And from those examples is his saying when he said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثَلِ الْأُتْرُجَّةِ رِيحُهَا طَيِّبٌ وَطَعْمُهَا طَيِّبٌ the example of the believer who recites the Qur'an is like the utruj. It is a type of citrus fruit. This fruit is fragrant, it's pleasant, and its taste, and its taste is delightful. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying the example of the believer who recites the Qur'an is similar to this fruit. It is pleasant, in its fragrance, and it is also delightful in its taste. And the Prophet ﷺ then gave an example of the believer who does not recite the Qur'an. He said, وَمَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثَلِ التَّمَرَةِ لَا رِيحَ لَهَا وَطَعْمُهَا حُلُّ And the example of a believer who does not recite the Qur'an is like a date, which has no fragrance, yet has a sweet taste. So what we understand from this is the believer is one who preserves and holds fast to the recitation of the Qur'an. By doing this, in turn, it has an effect on his inward and outward. This is as if he adorns himself with fragrance and in turn his character develops to become even better. So the Prophet Sallallahu compared such a believer to the Utruj fruit. This fruit is a citrus fruit resembling a lemon or an orange. So not only the one who eats it benefiting, but those who are around it can also benefit through its fragrance. So it joins between being pleasant to look at through its color, fragrant to smell, and delightful to taste. On the other hand, the believer who is unable to persist in their recitation of the Qur'an, the Prophet Sallallahu compared that believer to a date. For in and of itself, it is something good, being sweet to whoever eats it. However, its goodness does not benefit those who do not taste it. Given this, we should ask ourselves as believers, what is our state with regard to the Qur'an? And which category of believers do we fall into? Another example, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ gave is of the honey bee. He ﷺ compared the believer to the honey bee. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ إِنَّ مَثَلَ الْمُؤْمِنْ كَمَثَلِ النَّحْلَةِ أَكَلَتْ طَيِّبًا وَوَضَعَتْ طَيِّبًا وَوَقَعَتْ عَلَىٰ عُودٍ فَلَمْ تَكْسِرْ وَلَمْ تُفْسِدْ The example of the believer is like that of the honey bee. It consumes that which is wholesome and good, which is pollen and nectar, and in turn produces that which is good and wholesome, which is honey. Whenever the bee lands on something, it does not break, corrupt, or ruin that thing. This is the example the Prophet ﷺ gave regarding the believer. We benefit three things from this hadith. Three benefits we can take from this hadith, brothers and sisters. The first benefit we take from this hadith is consumption of good. Just like a honeybee consumes or feeds off things that are wholesome and good, a believer consumes things that are wholesome and good, not only physically, but also spiritually. A believer consumes good, wholesome, and nutritious food to nourish his body, 
physically while making sure the food is halal and permissible. A believer also consumes good and wholesome things to nourish his soul. By reciting the Quran, by listening to the Quran, by learning the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the life of his companions, and by seeking beneficial knowledge, and the list goes on. All these are from the consumption of good. This is how the believer is supposed to be. As the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in the example. The second benefit we take from this hadith, brothers and sisters, is putting out or delivering of good. When the Prophet وسلم, said that honeybee produces good and wholesome honey, which has numerous benefits as we all know, we have to understand the reason behind it, which is that it only produces good and wholesome because it consumed good and wholesome. For example, as we all know, different regions have honey with different tastes and flavors. And the honey gets the flavor of the flowers that the bees feed, off, that the bees feed from. Similarly, a person's behavior in a way is a reflection of people they are surrounded with. So when the believer consumes good, he delivers good and not only benefits himself, but also benefits him, but also benefits his community by putting forth what he has consumed from beneficial knowledge and everything that is good. Being a beneficial person in the family, being a beneficial person in the community and in the society. The third benefit we take from this hadith, brothers and sisters, is not being harmful. In the last part of the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, the honeybee does not break, corrupt, or ruin the stem it, it lands on. Meaning, in the process of extracting benefit and delivering it, a believer is not harmful. As you all know, humans benefit greatly from the resources of the earth, but some people out of negligence and greed ruin the very resources they benefit from, which in turn have caused global warming and widespread destruction. So the believer brings about happiness in himself and happiness in those around him, such that the people around him do not find in his words or his deeds anything that is abusive and offensive to them. The Prophet ﷺ gave an example regarding this also and he said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا اللَّعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِيءِ the, the believer is not a slanderer. The believer is not a slanderer, nor does he curse others, nor is he immoral, nor shameless. So brothers and sisters, let us strive to consume and learn and internalize these noble values and morals and to instill them in the hearts and minds of our sons and daughters and the family. May Allah make us from the sincere and good believers and bless us with good attributes and characters and enter us into the paradise that he has promised the believers. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad, Khatamun Nabiyin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a hadiyahu ila yawmiddin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Mathal al-mu'min ka mathal al-zara' la tazalu al-rihu tumiluhu wa la yazalu al-mu'minu yusibuhu al-bala' The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith is comparing the believer to the likes of the process of planting crops. He said, the example of the believer is like planting crops. The wind continues to toss the crops from one side to another. And in the same manner, a believer is continually afflicted with what appears to be a tribulation. But in reality, it is to raise their ranks. So when the tribulations increase, and the believer is afflicted by what causes him discomfort in his bodily health, in his family, and in his wealth, then he finds himself able to bear this and able to be patient 
so his resolve persists and his strength of will continues. He knows that this outward tribulation is really a blessing to remove from his shortcomings and to raise his ranks with his Lord. He then moves forward towards the culmination of his life and fulfills his role, being confident in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined and written for him. He is, in complete he is in complete reliance and trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acting in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, let the believers rely. It is possible that a believer may fall into sin. It is possible that a believer might fall short. However, the believer is who hastens towards repentance and to the, and to the devotion of his Creator. The believer returns back to their previous uprightness, their example being the like of a wheat spike, which bows down to the strong wind whenever it passes by and then it rises up again to its former position of, of uprightness. In this regard, the Prophet said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنْ مَثَلُ السُّنْبُلَةِ تَمِيلُ أَحْيَانًا وَتَقُومُ أَحْيَانًا the example, of a, the example of a believer is like the wheat spike. It sometimes lowers itself and sometimes stands upright. So when a believer falls into a sin, he immediately seeks forgiveness and returns back to his Lord, repenting and agreeing with the call of Allah. And repent to Allah, O believers, all of you, so that you may achieve success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the sincere and righteous believers who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and are beneficial to themselves, their families, and their community. Ya Allah, we ask you for the best of this world, the best of the hereafter, that you will protect us from the punishment of the fire, and that you enter us into your paradise with the righteous believers. Indeed, you are the most generous and most forgiving. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid.